Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode in my Microsoft uh, VDI, Cloud VDI series. Um, this is a series where I'm kind of going back to my, my original passion in sort of cloud, which is VDI. Um, and we're going to be looking in, throughout the series, we'll be looking at three sort of main areas of Microsoft Cloud VDI, including uh, Microsoft DevBox, which is the current topic but also Windows 365 and AVD. Looking at the features, looking at concepts, doing comparisons, but also looking at key use cases for all three technologies. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started with this episode. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a Microsoft Cloud VDI series. Uh, and today we're going to be going on part two of the RBAC, uh, role-based access control, Microsoft DevBox. So we'll talk about roles for common activities, talk about platform engineer roles, and also continue with the demo, drop it demo portal. Um, we're going to look at Intune today, and so just before we deploy the dev box, um, or just before we get ready to provision that, because again, as a developer, you can provision it yourself. We're going to look at Intune, some of the configuration policies, and, and how to do that. <clears throat> so let's look at some common roles for activities, uh, and specifically, I want to look at the 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 dev box for the platform engineer role, really. So. Platform engineer has a very important role because they really do a lot of the, um, they're sort of the, the key um, admin when it comes to the dev box. Um, so as you can see in, in the table, they've got lots of different activities and, and uh, roles uh, that can be assigned. Again, if you're following uh, lease, privilege access and zero trust really, um, you, you don't want to give owner to the whole kit and caboodle. And again, you might have different different platform engineers. So make sure you assign the role that kind of meets what they're going to be doing. So again, if they're going to be granting permissions to create resource groups, you know, the, the platform engineer will need the owner and contributor role. And that's uh, the, the subscription scope. And as you go further down, if you, if you want to give someone permission to submit um, Microsoft support tickets and including request capacities, again, uh, that's the platform engineer, but they need to have the role of support request contributor. So if that's a certain part of your team, don't, you don't need to give them owner or contributor, they can just have that support request contributor. And again, that's at the subscription scope. So we have those different scopes as well. As you can see, we've got the resource group and we've got the dev center as well. As we go down, you've got different sort of activities like granting permissions to create virtual networks and subnets, granting permissions to create sort of network connections. And then it's, it's all around granting permissions. And that's really the platform engineer. That's one of their key roles is giving out permissions to the different um, sort of uh, key stakeholders within that dev box management. And again, there's different sort of permissions as well. Again, owner or contributor or network contributor required at those different scopes we can see. Then we're kind of we're still on, on the sort of um, the sort of permissions, um, but this is for the dev manager. So there's some common activities and roles for the dev manager. And again, they, they have um, some responsibility within this because they've got, they manage their uh, development team. So they can grant permissions to enable or disable project catalogs. And again, the dev manager is a contributor, but the, the, the dev center scope. So really a, a dev manager should not need any permissions outside of that dev center. That's like the top level that they need really. Whereas your platform engineer is more like a support person anyway, the overall support person, not just the dev center, they're going to be doing support work for, you know, um, our management of, of all the Azure um, tenants and not just DevBox. Whereas your dev manager, they're just focused on the, the everything underneath that dev center. So again, grant permissions to manage catalogs and manage dev boxes. You can give them the dev center project admin at that project level. And finally, creating and managing catalogs and GitHub or Azure repository. So, so as your DevOps repository. So this is actually, this is, uh, this is outside of Entra RBAC because the permissions need to be assigned within Azure DevOps or GitHub. And again, it's at that repository level. So whoever your um, admins are of, of your sort of um, GitHub or Azure DevOps, they need to assign those permissions to, to your dev manager. And finally, the actual developer themselves, they have a role here as well. So they've, they've got some, the main common role and activity they're going to have is creating and managing their own dev box in a project. We're going to see how to do that in a, in a demo coming up in a couple, maybe another episode, have an episode after this, I think. And again, that, that role is that dev box user role, which I'm going to, you know, I'm going to show you how we can assign that. Um, or I might have already shown you that anyway, but um, that's at the project scope as well. Uh, so... If we see this is again this sort of diagram we've, we saw this in the last uh, last slide the slide the, the last episode episode before that this is a hierarchy of sort of the the, the dev box um and where the permissions go so for a for an actual owner contributor as i mentioned 
they really need to be at that resource group level or even above really but again it depends how you've got your tenant as your tenancy if you've got different landing zones you've got a dev box landing zone then it makes sense to do it at subscription level but that owner contributor role really needs to be set at the resource group level and that's for you know your your platform engineer sort of person um and again the platform engineer will have that owner role so you know to grant to grant permissions um to sort of manage Microsoft Devbox with your organization subscription. You should assign them the owner or contributor role, again, depending on the setup of your Azure subscription. Uh, assign these, you need to assign these roles at the resource group level if you can as well. The dev centers, network connections, Devbox definition, Devbox pools, and projects within that resource group inherit these role assignments. From that, you know, when you talk about the owner role, you assign the owner role to give uh, a user full control and create and manage Devbox resources and permissions to other users. When a user has that owner role in the resource group, they can do they can do multiple activities, including assign roles to platform engineers, so they can manage DevBox resources and create Dev centers. They can you know network connections, DevBox definitions, and DevBox pools. They're the full admin basically. They can view and delete and change settings for all Dev Center, and they can attach or detach catalogs as well. Obviously, there's a caution with that when you assign that owner or contributor role on the resource group, and these permissions also apply to non DevBox related resources that exist in that resource group so you need to be careful again very much dependent on how you've got your uh how you've got your as you're set up if you've got different landing zones then just be careful how you set those permissions from the contributor role perspective this this permission is role is going to or this role will give the user full control and create to ma or manage that dev center and projects within that resource group um it has the same permissions as the owner role except for performing any role assignments essentially uh, okay, so let's jump back into the demo part. I want to look at Intune and just some of the configuration policies again that you might want to assign and, and where we can do those. So please join me in the demo. So here we are. We're in the Intune portal and and with with DevBox, um, depending on which way you were to to um, integrate DevBox with your identity platform. So if you, if you want to join it, for example, which way are going to do? It, it automatically uh, enrolls it into Intune. So when you come to your devices. Um, so it's just so you go back windows you can see here so at the moment obviously I can see my this is my I've got a windows device where I do all my sort of video editing um, so I've got personal host so that'll be there but what we'll do is as we provision it we'll come back in here we'll see that they're here and we can start applying policies but again if you want to comply you know there's different ways you can do policies obviously so for those that aren't familiar with Intune you can go to devices um, again go to um, you can go to windows and here you can do uh, configuration and you can create different policies here <clears throat> like an import policy you want to so again we're going to go windows 10 or later uh, again we can ever do settings catalog or templates let's just click on templates and here we can we can you can see with different different uh template names here you can do endpoint protection identity protection put in kiosk mode so there are lots of different policies we can put on there if we go to settings catalog we just go to create this is where we can do more than manual so we'll give it a name Dev, oh, dev box demo let's call it put description if we want uh, and here's where we can look with, with settings catalog you can choose which settings you want so we can add settings here and again depends what we want to do do we want to do application defaults or do we want to do authentication bit locker bluetooth browser um so we we could put in something to do with browser here so we could um you know allow address bar drop down you know so stuff like this we can configure allow cookies so just just tick these whatever you want again i'm just doing some just to show you how we can create that that profile and that policy and here's where you can do the scoping tags um again we can just leave it at the default for now um next is we're going to do assignments so here, what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave this blank for now, but we'll we'll add this to essentially we'd we'd add a group for for, for dev boxes, um, then we can review and create that. So what we'll do is we'll create a we'll create before we. What I'll do in the background is create a group and assign it, and then um, I'll I'll make sure the dev boxes um, go into there into that group. So you can create that, and then what you can do is you can assign this policy basically like you would any other policy in Intune. So what I want to show you is essentially that you can manage. Your, your dev boxes with uh, Intune and, and the significance of this 
as we'll see as we go along, is the fact you can actually manage your other VDI platforms within Microsoft Cloud in the same way. Windows 365 is fully managed for Intune, but also AVD again. And, and I want to show you that the fact that we have these different Microsoft have these different platforms shouldn't matter. You can manage them all through that one pane of glass, which is Intune. That should be your sort of source of truth. So if you do have developers, if you do have use cases for Windows 365, if you do have use cases for AVD, you know, it doesn't mean they have to have different management platforms. You can manage them all within Intune. And I'm going to show that as we go along. I'm going to show the different devices that we're, we're managing. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, a lot, a lot's happened in the last week or two. Uh, I went past 20k. We're doing it. We're doing a giveaway for that. I also uh, my my visa to Australia got accepted, which is really happy. We got approved. So um, you will start. So there'll be a, there will be a lot of there will be a lot of uh, content I'm going to create around around my Australia move with the packing and thought I'd share it. Why not? Not every day you move uh, country. And you move your entire life, you start your entire life in a different country. So I thought I'd share that uh, and, and what we're doing with that, but also kind of uh, share that journey with you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching. Keep an eye out for the details of the giveaway. Uh, make sure you are subscribed. Look at it. I've got loads of useful links in my description as well. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Goodbye.